Barakat to Yahweh, Barakat to Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well, peace and love, salutations and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. You Akim, if you are Quatim that believe in Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, with your whole heart, mind, body, and spirit. And who are waiting for these last and final prophecies that unfold and happen in the earth. And the return of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, whom the world calls Jesus, but his true name is Yahweh Shai. He's the Savior and the Redeemer of the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. And he's coming back within these last days to gather and redeem the elect and cause him to inherit the promise, promise unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, before that day happens, which is something that we're looking forward to, the time of trouble must happen. All right. The time of Jacob's trouble and Esau is building up. All right. That that machine. All right. As our apostle Gabar said within his video, all right, he's building up that that uh, persecution machine. All right. So that he could have his justified reason all right, of condemning the children of Israel to death. All right, because ultimately, all right, this is to fulfill that that uh, 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 hatred that he has, you know, for us. You know, when you look at, you know, their wickedness and you weigh their wickedness in the earth, you know, compared to the elect, you know, or those that believe and know that they're Israelites. All right. And that are trying to serve you. How about Shemi with their whole heart, mind, body and soul? When you weigh their wickedness in the earth compared to ours, our, their wickedness certainly surpasses our wickedness. All right, but they have done a hell of a job all right, to convince the world that we are wicked. All right. Even going to the part of call, calling us uh, uh, black Hebrew Israelites for demonization purposes all right, because that fits their narrative. You know, although there's other Israelites that are out there, you know, that are various different colors. All right. You have uh, uh, those that are so light to the point they can be mistaken as being white. But yet, are they black Hebrew Israelites? All right. Um, calling us uh, cults. All right. Because these are words that carry a, a negative connotation. All right. And in 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 uh a one that they use within the video that the apostle did his video on, and uh, also the beloved brother Rakam 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 Rakam, they were using the word extreme. All right, they kept using the word extreme. Now these are buzzwords, and if you learn anything, I wish the apostles and elders mentioned this. All right, this is something that Esau does when he's trying to build something up. All right, when you go back to all right, the earlier years of, you know, the 2000s, and you see uh, their war on terror, all right, there was a, a bunch of buzzwords that they were using to basically incite, you know, uh, uh, people to become very patriotic and hate Arabs. All right, although they're trying to tie us to the Arabs too, which we have nothing to do with them. But they did the same thing within the media. You know, but this time it's to come after the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites. You know, which we are trying to do our best to serve Yahweh by Shemi Shai. But Esau is falsely accusing us to condemn us. All right, because ultimately he wants to do away with all the Israelites. All right, he wants to do away with the Israelites. Now, a scripture that came to mind is the book of Romans. All right, it just came to mind, Romans, the eighth chapter, and I believe that's the 34th verse, if I'm not mistaken. And it says, who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died, yet rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us. So Esau is trying to condemn. All right, he's trying to bring up charges and accusations against us. <laughs> and that's funny. 
all right? Uh, the blue letter doesn't want to work all of a sudden. But I'm trying to look up the word condemn, you know, which I don't necessarily have to look it up within the blue letter. You know, I can just grab the definition for it. You know, which the word condemn means to sentence to a particular punishment, especially death. So this is what they want for us. All right. They want to sentence us to death. And it's, it's, it's not because of what you think it is. It's just simply because of that old hatred that they carry, you know, but to win the people. Which they're going to win the people, they're going to win some of your family, your friends and relatives. All right, which are going to turn on you and deliver you up. The book of Romans uh, 8 and 33. So we're jumping to the verse above that one. Who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahweh's elect? It is Yahweh that justifies. See, the elect has been justified. So there's nothing that you can do to condemn them. There's nothing that you can do to lay to their charge in the eyes of Yahweh that justified. Esau is going to demonize anyway he's going to slander he's going to bring up false accusers and it's going to be so believable to the point that even your own relatives begin to believe are the things that they're saying about you as well as your friends all right as well as your co-workers all right nobody that has known you and seen the way that you carried yourself seeing that you're not that type of person all right, you're not doing the things that they're laying charges upon you on. All right, being able to, if they were in a sound mind, all right, make a sound judgment about you and your character. All right, stop for one second to believe that what they're saying is slander. All right, and some of, some of these individuals, all right, having a bad encounter with you are going to make up and, and bring up uh, uh, accusations about you just based off of the way that they feel about you, not the way that you truly carried yourself. The scriptures say, and um, the book of Matthews, the uh, the Tim chapter, verse 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We inspired through the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we're wise, but we're also, you know, not out here, you know, doing things to bring a bad report upon us or upon the church that we belong to. So a lot of the things that Esau brings up about us is slander, all right, it's false accusations. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils. And they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my, my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same time, or uh, so like in that same hour, what ye shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against uh, their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he, shall, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. So this happened before, but it's about to happen again in our time. All right, and in, in, in so much that there's going to be a heavy persecution against the church. And when this happens, you're going to have relatives turning against each other. All right. You're going to have relatives turning on each other, turning their backs on each other. So the, what's happening is you have a, a just men that are going to suffer like the wicked, you know, but at the moment, it seems like the wicked are, are it's, it's happening according to what's supposed to happen to the righteous. You know, Esau is being glorified, but we're being condemned. But when Yahweh comes to justify us, all right, just men, it's going to happen according to the works of the, the, the righteous, all right? And the wicked are going to get according to the works of the wicked.
All right, the scriptures say, woe to you that put evil for good and good for evil. And that's what happens with, within Esau's system. But it's all stemmed in hatred. The book of Ecclesiastes 8 and 14, there is a vanity which is done under the earth that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the works of the wicked. Again, there be wicked to whom it happeneth according to the works of the righteous. I said this is this also is vanity. See, we, for this truth's sake, are getting ready to suffer as evildoers. But not because we have done some form of evil, you know, but because we are hated all right, for being servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahvashai. So we're suffering really for righteousness sake, as the evildoer will suffer, but because we're doing righteousness. All right. First Peter 3 and 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your conversation in Yahweh Shai. So we're being falsely accused. You know, they have uh, crisis actors. They have spies. They have agents. They have liars that are that are that are coming up to lie. All right. And aren't feeling ashamed about the things that they're doing. You know, but let it be done unto them are right, the same thing that was done unto Judas Iscariot. All right, or any other false accuser, you know, or liar, you know, that, that came up against, you know, a brother, you know, or a sister that truly believes in Yahweh by Shimei Reading Shai. Read in order, Peter, for it is better if the will of Yahweh be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Yahweh Shai also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might uh, bring us to Yahweh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. See, even Yahweh suffered, all right, doing righteousness. All right, he suffered the way that an evildoer would suffer, but because he did righteousness. All right, they falsely accused him and condemned him unto death. And the scriptures say when you go into the book of um, Isaiah, let's see, the 53rd chapter, Yep, uh, Isaiah 53 and 9. It says, He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was deceit in his mouth. When Yahweh Shai was crucified, you know, there were two male factors all right, that, that were justly receiving the punishment that they received. All right, but the one repented, you know, and the other railed on Yahweh Shai. But the thing is that the one said that that we, you know, do, don't you fear the most high? He said that we being up here deserve, you know, what we're going through. But this man is innocent, you know, so he repented and believed on Yahweh. So therefore, right now, he's a part of the elect, you know, but he suffered as an evildoer. All right. Although he did righteousness. But the admonition goes as such, 1 Peter 4 and 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other man's matters. Because if you suffer for such, you justly deserved it. But if you're doing righteousness and you're suffering because you're following the will of your Shmi Abashad, there's a reward laid up for you. 1 Peter 4 and 16, yet if any man suffer as a follower of Yahweh Shai, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Yahweh on this behalf. Um, when you go into the book of uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, it tells you what's going to go down in the last days. All right. And it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, prowls, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, uh, uh, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Because all it takes is for you to have a bad relationship with your woman. And she knowing that you were Hebrew Israelite, the first thing that she's going to use when she, when she gets an opportunity and she's going to use that to slander you, all right? Because she knows that the world 
following the vibration of Esau Edom is against Hebrew Israelites. All right, the same thing with the friend. Now, the word for false accuser, the word there is Diablos. You know, or let's say, for instance, you got a, a, a court, you know, hearing, you know, for, for, for uh, um, to basically see, you know, if you're capable of raising your children. What you think she going to bring up in court if y'all separated, if there's a, 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 you know, a hearing in that regard, you know, uh, forget exactly a custody, custody battle. What do you think that uh, she's going to bring up in court? You know, what you think the first thing is going to be when she bring up in court? Or let's say, for instance, there's a domestic dispute and she's being belligerent and outrageous. You know, and you haven't done anything, but she calls the police on you. <laughs> What's she going to say to them? Oh, he's a Hebrew Israelite. But anyways, um, the word there is Diablos for false accusing. It says prone to slander, slanderous, accusing falsely. Uh, cal calumniator, false accuser, slanderer. Metaphor applied to a man who by opposing uh, the cause of Yahweh may be said to act a part of the devil or side with him. And they're siding with Esau, who's siding with the spiritual demon Satan. <laughs> all right. So they're Diablos. But ultimately, they're being deceived by the deceiver. All right. The scriptures say within the book of Revelation 20 and 8, and he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So Esau is the deceiver. All right, he's that devil, all right, whom they're siding with. You know, but the word for de uh, deceive in this particular scripture is planao, and it says to cause to stray, to lead astray, to lead aside from the right way. So how, how is he leading them aside from the right way? Well, he's causing evil to be called good and good to be be called evil all right like it states within the book of isaiah it says in isaiah 5 and 20 woe unto unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness and bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter so that which should be known as being evil in the world esau calls it good but that which is good he's call, calling it evil all right why because they hate him that is of an upright conversation. All right. Like it says within the book of our Psalms, they hate him that is of an upright conversation. The book of Psalms 37 and 14, the wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of an upright conversation. And that's us. All right. We're of an upright conversation. All right. But they hate us. And that's the reason why we're waiting on our Savior, Yahweh Shai, to come, which is going to come. Because when Yahweh Shai comes, we're going to be justified. But the wicked is going to be condemned. You know, as opposed to right now, the righteous is being condemned, but the, but the, the wicked is being acquitted. They're going to, uh, um, you know, within the video, there was a, a man who died with his two daughters. And they don't know know the cause of death, but they're bringing up his religion. All right, they brought up his religion. Oh, he was a Hebrew Israelite. He belonged to an extreme group. That's because they're building up their their uh, um, persecution machine, as Apostle Gabar said. They're building up that persecution machine. All right, his religious, you know, beliefs has nothing to do with with them being found dead. All right. There's no sounds of foul play, they said within the video, but yet they uh, can just throw that out there that he was a Hebrew Israelite. So so they think that that has something to do with it. Get the hell out of here, man. All right, as uh, uh, Apostle Gabar brought out within his lesson, I'll end it off with this one. The book of 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. And what is he trying to do? 
He's trying to build that narrative up so that he can have a justified reason to coming up against us that are believers. So with that, I truly have uh, hope that this lesson was edifying. All praises be unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Peace and love, citation, mercy be unto the hopeful elect. Shalom.